Welcome to module five. I'm together with Raymond here in our Windows Security and Forensics class. Raymond, let's show why we need Windows Forensics. Well, we're here now for network forensics. Network forensics, here we go. <laughs> Which is, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm old man, I, I'm forgetting stuff. <laughs> okay, so um, we're now about analyzing the network. What's actually going in and out of your computer? and find out what happened when and why, and how can we use that information for our for forensic analysis. True, true. For that, uh, I, what we do is usually, uh, I, there are a couple of remarkable questions that we have to remember. First of all, do you have any network security policy? What's Hassan around? Did he attack you? Uh, if he did, what is your emergency plan? Do you have any threats? Are they external or internal? I give an e internal threat example. Hassan demonstrated how hackers can ex attack externally. Uh, how can we prevent the systems? How can we monitor the network? Is your logging working? Th this is some important points that you need to ask. First of all, let's start with the question what network forensic is. Okay, well, um, in your network forensics, you're, you're looking for for traces, you're, you're trying to monitor, to log, to capture and store all the information about what's going on on your network. Make sure that you have an analysis of all the network traffic for the gathering and make sure that you have an, the legal evidence for the collection and intrusion detection. So you're monitoring, you're logging, you're capturing, you're storing and then you're analyzing the information. This is happening in a changing environment because nowadays, it's not about the external world that is dangerous and the internal world that is safe. Because the internal world can be dangerous as well. Yes. Especially in the networking environment. Nowadays. And uh, networking is also a way where we go to the external wo work as well. Okay. Um, network forensics can give information, as you said. Uh, but to find out, we have to ask questions like whom, when, uh, where, how, and how often. We should be, I mean, um, I gave a beautiful example that it was an insider, but sending information out, looking outside to how we can damage, give damage to the example, uh, sorry, to the network. And when it's come to network, could be, for example, a DDoS attack. So in this case, we should be able to look in the IPS, IDS, firewalls, routers, switches, can you explain IPS and IDS? Institution prevention system, institution detecting system, okay? This uh, prevention system is basically to prevent, detection system is to detect. These days, bo both of them are co uh, connected to each other, but thank you for asking. Uh, this is, you know, uh, expect, <laughs> me uh, expecting people to know. Um, event logs of the PCs, you showed some great stuff on PowerShell. Network interface cards, cables, uh, Wi-Fi's, data centers. So it will come to the main point which we started. Is it validate? Uh, is it uh, unpredictable? Is it visible or invisible? What is the speed? And is it on the air or not? So we should be able to get us some evidences. Why? Because host forensics will give us only information about the host, but we, we need to be, as investigators, we should be able to look everywhere. And network forensics is the best way for us to look everywhere. Why? Because we will have uh, access to the network cables, to the server rooms, to the wireless, to the data, and we should be able to capture this information. But isn't this hard nowadays that, that devices have, have uh, network adapters lying kind of everywhere? There is Bluetooth adapters, there's Wi-Fi adapters, there is 3G adapters, there is Ethernet. Uh, you, you know, I was just thinking deeply. You, you, uh, I, I see my students curious, you know, it's, it's getting actually easier, not harder. Because if you have the proper proper uh, equipment, trust me, uh, sniffing or attacking. You just reminded me what Hussein done at I Ignite, uh, <laughs> tech at back then, uh, you know, who was, I attended his session to take some photos. 
uh, he was walking with some adapters around, and I, when I saw that, I said to the guy next to me, he said, excuse me, if I were you, I would just uh, switch, uh, switch off my computer. He said, why? I said, you will find out shortly. What he done is he collected, while he was walking, many people was connected up in the air. Um, yeah. If he had the right tools, it's not really an issue. I'm going to talk why it's not an issue. But before that, let's look into the details. What is a network crime incident? For that, there is three types of different investigation. A proactive investigation, which will help you to prepare and detect the incidents. Then we have the real-time investigation, let's say a DOS attack or DDoS attack, where you can monitor and preserve incoming as well as outgoing traffic during the crime to conduct the traceback if it's possible. Then we have the retroactive investigation, which is basically collecting and reassemble leftover traces. Of Think the about CSI, you know, a CSI movie. What you, someone get harmed, killed, they will come, they will close the environment, they will take photos, they will try to get fingerprints. It's the same thing. We have to take photos, we have to take, not fingerprints, but uh, logs uh, and uh, traces in the computer. Remember, uh, there are different models and in this, in the proactive one, we capture. In the reactive one, we identify. But both of them is about detecting, preserving, researching, extracting, and hopefully solving. Uh, this will give us data aggregation, validation, analysis, and confirmation. But there is three A, which I want you to remember, dear uh, MBA students. You have to document all your steps. When, first of all, acquire, analyze, attest. When you acquire uh, the steps, you have to document all the steps. You have to establish the COC, which is the chain of case study. Yes. You have to authenticate the acquisition. In the analyzing part, again, document all the steps. Follow the repeatable and explainable process. You should be able to repeat it and you have to be able to explain it. And more importantly, you should be able to seek independent advice. Then attest. That's where reporting comes into place. That's where you have to uh, find evidence and back up your, uh, your assertions. Yes. And of course, put your uh, conclusion. It doesn't have to be subjective. It has to be uh, intersubjective because why you put in your personal, but you have to be in a in a uh, way that it has to be you know sub. Uh, you must have a viable story. You want a story exactly. that makes sense, and and you have to back it up with all the evidence that you have. Exactly. Collected. So there will be a story in the end, and everybody must think of that story well. It sounds like a real story. It sounds as if that could have happened. True. Make sure that you fix every error in there. True. And here's the question for you, dear students, or, you know, uh, Microsoft Virtual Academy, that's why I call you students. Uh, how many, I mean, I'm pretty sure you know the side level. How many layers are there? Usually there were seven. That's seven? what I learned at school. Um, um, when you look at the slides, it's eight. Uh, to be honest, it's not what you learn in the school. First of all, the human layer, the eight layer. Then we have the uh, application presentation session, transportation network, data link, and physical layer. Okay? And we have the protocol highlights. So, network forensics involves with everything you see here. And each layer has the associated protocol into it, where you have to work with. So, it's important to know, you have your network transmissions, your memory, and your data, which is uh, tra traveling, remember? That's the traveling data and transit. 
To be able uh, to do network analysis, you asked me a few minutes ago, is it getting harder? Not really. All that you have to have, sometimes you got a portable solution, sometimes you have a really good NIC card, a network interface card, before you ask, <laughs> uh, tap device, Wi-Fi adapter, or rack mount solution. Or sometimes uh, some uh, solution which will have all in one, which will help you to capture your network traffic, hard drive, uh, BIOS, and etc. When it comes to network forensics, there is a big question mark. And the question mark is about the target. Usually the target is anonymous. You should be able to capture online or offline. How is this going to happen? If it's online, it's easy. Most of the expensive or good switches have a spam port or you, you use, for example, can enable, which you can um, hijack those and start to sniff the environment where you can collect information. Uh, network traffic can be used to show uh, a time sequence of the user's network activities. And remember my real case? Yeah. I was able to see what searches he has done. I done it offline. But an online is usually the six suspect is watched in real time. Uh, where you can find IP addresses, identity information, where you can uh, use your specialized tools to look into the network source. And in general, that's the easiest way. How you will prepare the network for capturing. If you have a spam port, put it in. Uh, start to capture information. Scenario two, you can tap in uh, and do that. Scenario three, you can tap into the uh, link aggregator and start to capture. In this, we assume you have the right to do so. Uh, it's a bit different than security. In security, usually when you do penetration testing, you don't have access to any of these. Exactly. Okay? So this is also one important point, the difference between a proactive and reactive approach. As a white hat hacker, as a penetration tester, uh, you might get access to those, but if you're doing black hat or uh, black box, not black hat, black box <laughs> penetration testing, then you will not have access to these because usually hackers, they don't walk unless it's a movie, you know. <laughs> uh, I don't want to mention name where the movie star goes in with a car into the, it wasn't a very recent movie. He drives the car into the data center, you know, just walks in, nobody knows him. No, no, it's, life is not that easy. Okay. Uh, network forensics ha will have, again, some tools. And if you look at the slide, I'm comparing the computer or digital forensics to network forensics. There in a computer, you look into the .eo01 files. Where network forensics, you use PCAP. In computer forensics, you check the sectors and network packets. In computer, you look in the OS and network. You look in the traffic which is used in the OS. In computer, you have the file system. In network, you have the protocols. In computer, it's all about the capacity of the RAM, memory cards, where in network, it's all about traffic and time. Computer could be H, uh, hard disk, SSD, flash, RAID, where it's cloud, data center, network, and NIC in Foreign uh, network forensics, yes? If I look at this chart, it's like for network forensics, it's much less Windows and much more generic intercomputer communication going on. That's exactly what it is. And it has nothing to do, hardly anything to do with the operating system you're dealing with. Uh, Besides uh, the operating system using the protocols, yes. Yes, but uh. most of them are using the same protocols. Uh, yes, doesn't matter what operating system you use, TCP IP, the Transmission Control Protocol IP protocol, that 25 protocol which is inside is independent. Okay, this brings us to the next point. Network versus security forensics. N forensic is not just deep packet inspection, okay? 
Uh, it requires the loosest capture, storage analysis, and extremely, uh, not and, uh, also analysis of extremely large data volumes. Their network forensics is looking to the enterprise versus lawful intercepts. Uh, security is concerned with the process of the reconstruction. Uh, it's not really, as you said, looking at the process of the restructuring of the network, but uh, the network forensics is into that. And it will look what happened, how it happened, all based on IP packages. Basically, it's a different way to track the information compared to security. Yeah. Which will, uh, you know, uh, which will, which is all about finding proof of network security, uh, not network security, network attack. It's troubleshooting, uh, maybe uh, looking at the activity. When I say looking, is monitoring with the IT and HR policies, and try to identify the source of the data leaks. Try to uh, look on the business transactions and maybe intercept or verify the VoIP and video or the IP performance. So we have to be able to capture the traffic. We have to be able to analyze the traffic. We have to be able to be look into the details. And this will bring me to another topic, which now I'm not going to use Hussein uh, to attack or I'm not going to create a virus. Now I'm going to go back to my college days where I studied network engineering. Uh, back to network packet analysis. Why? Because this is all about packets. So we have packet switch networks, which means each message is divided into the small data blocks. And packets are stored forward by intermediate nodes. Uh, packets from different nodes and processes get intermixed into the networks. They have a root, and uh, they usually follow the shortest, shortest path to the destination. Uh, we have a sender. When we look at the OSI level, you know, each layer has a different role. To be honest, I'm not going to cover all these, OK? No. But everything is depending on what protocol you're using. A user uh, can monopolize the link. No, no user can monopolize the link for a long time because you can easily monitor this and verify that, especially if you have the RPS IDS. Yes. If you have lots of network traffic, you can use load balancing. And load balancing, for example, is that's what I do as a penetration tester. It's my job to see if that, when I do an attack, OK, I will try to see if there is a load, load, uh, load balancer. Why? Because this way, I can see if the traffic has been distributed or not. Uh, but this is a benefit in terms of when it comes to um, uh, network packet analysis as well. Why? Because it will help you not to waste resources. And there will be no congestion during setup time. What are the drawbacks? The drawbacks are packets may not arrive in order. We know TCP, you know, yeah. uh, TCP is a slow protocol. Why? It sends the packets There's a and, you know, three-way handshake protocol. It says, excuse me, are you Raymond? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I'm Raymond. Yeah, nice to meet you. Three-way nice handshake. You. Excuse me, are you Hussain? No, I'm Packet not rejected. Hussain. So each packet has uh, some, you know, fin, acknowledge, uh, uh, reset, uh, fin is the fin, RSD, different, in different, it. different flags which, which they use. Uh, UDP, for example, it really doesn't care if you receive the packet or not, but it's very fast, which is used in VoIP. But again, I don't want to uh, go into the networking. This is uh, later, but quickly, I want you to remind you a few stuff. For that, I'm going to quickly remind you, uh, please, let's have a look in the slides. I'm going to rush a little bit because really it's not a networking session. We have packets. In our packets, we have the headers and data. Data is the information to be conveyed between the sender and receiver. It could be text or binary. Uh, it could be image, document. It could be in website, email. It could be small or big. Really, not my problem. Header, 
What is a header? It's a meta information added to the data. With the help of the header, uh, data can be reached in the destination correctly. And it contains address, length, type, error detection code, packet order, status flag. Why do we need it, Raymond? Well, I think there is something special here with the header. All right. Because when, when the network traffic is encrypted, the header is not. So if you're investigating network traffic and the network traffic is being encrypted, the header may still provide some very interesting information because the metadata, metadata is there. Yeah. And it will tell you where the packets are coming from and where they are going to. And usually nowadays, more and more of the tra traffic is being encrypted. So that's really impacting the way you are investigating network traffic nowadays. Sure. Sure. Uh, Besides that, why do we need header then? You tell me. Why do you need a header? Yeah. Well, it, it provides you the information where the, informa where the traffic is coming from and where it is going to. Exactly. And maybe the route that it is following also. Exactly. And for that, quickly have a look at our slide deck quiz. We have uh, you know, the sender, the receiver, uh, as, as the message is uh, transferring between the layers, it will, you know, have, each layer will have its own um, stamping, which will be uh, de stamped in the receiver. Uh, here's an example, the packet in the application layer it's HTTP, in the transport layer is TCP, in the network layer is IP, and the link layer is the Ethernet itself. Yes. So, now, why did I cover all this? To make the network forensics job a bit easier. For, so, now we understand what networking is. We have to also understand how packets work, right? How we can analyze a packet because everything is stored in this packet. A good example, um, if Hussein was sitting here, he would say, never use uh, Qtex passwords, uh, FTP, SMTP, you know, uh, STP, you know, all these protocols. Why? Because uh, people can sniff and uh, easily see your packets. They are clear text, they are not encrypted. Yes. So, for, be, for me to be able to explain that, I'm going to quickly go to the packet analysis. Now, uh, use of packet analysis can be in a forensic analysis. It can help you to troubleshoot and debug. It can help you to collect sensitive information. If there is any misuse, this will also help you to detect those. And you can also get network statistics. But for my Forensics perspective, it's the way to collect the evidence yeah. and the way to track the source of an attack. Or, as Hussein mentioned, it's the way to learn the behavior of an attacker. From the packet. From the packet, yes. Uh, of course, you can help, it will help you to troubleshoot and deb debugging as well. But more importantly, if Hussein is sitting here, he's going to say, hey, a packet is like a memory for me. I can get passwords, I can get emails, I can get many other confidential data. Don't forget, yes, it's used in your computer. It's my surface here. But then I use wireless, NIC, uh, GPS, uh, GPRS, uh, uh, SIM card, uh, Bluetooth, you, you name it all this to transfer the data. But actually, every layer that you just showed is in that packet. Exactly. So it's, if, you, if you are able to untangle the packet, you have every layer in it. Exactly. And this will bring me to the misissue detection. Uh, if an employee is abusing the company policies, uh, for example, accessing restricted sites, or downloading bandwidth misissue. Like today, maybe most of you will not understand when I say misissue of the bandwidth, but I remember years ago, I mean, in some countries that this video is watched, it's still the same. We used to have three gig internet limit for 500 employees because internet was really, really, really expensive. 
Still is in some countries. Uh, still in some countries. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm from Australia, okay? Even though I live in Dubai now for the last 10 months, uh, we have some places that we don't have even ADSL 2 because it's huge. Uh, I hope the government will, uh, you know, fix it soon. Um, again, a miss issue could be an email. Emails can be spoofed. IP can be spoofed. IRP can be spoofed. And the best tool for that is Kane and Abel, which has seen a uh, showcase. Yes, we didn't show you how it can be done, but again, if you watch my previous session uh, with Milad, you will be able to see how I can use Kane and Abel to do all this. Again, packet analysis can be used for manual inspection, filtering, statistics, uh, session construction, Reconstruction. Uh, or text search, or binary pattern search, or packet inspection, or more importantly, protocol verification. The filtering can be based on the MAC, IP address, date, time, different patterns, or you can have different combinations. You can create complex filter expressions. The statistics could be on the bandwidth utilization, protocol, uh, you can see the top email sender, uh, especially, I mean, these days, if you're using Office 365 from the admin panel, you can see all this, or if you have Exchange, you can see all this as well. Uh, you can get beautiful statistics, but to be honest, I'm not here to talk about statistics. We are here to talk about network forensics. And network forensics has three important stuff, as I said. One, detect the intruder attacks using automated tools and monitor network logs manually. You sh it will help you to collect evidence for civil or criminal litigation against bad guys. It will help you to track, locate, and identify, and deny further access to the network. So, this brings us, uh, this time, we're gonna compare computer forensics versus network forensics. Uh, computer forensic involves, a, you know, I think we quickly talked about it in the beginning as well. Computer is all about, and that computer where network is basically investigation into the, these crimes often involves searching computers suspected to be involved. Forensic experts follow clear, well-defined methodologies, and unlike computer forensics that requires information from computers, this network will also get information from ports, where it's been used, how it's been used, who, when, how, how often was the communication happened, was it the low level or high level, was it during a web surfing, was it during, um, you know, was it a ATP which was sending I think you're gonna show us a cool demo on that, how we're gonna get you infect your computer in the next session. Yes. Let's talk about it later. If there is any payload, and uh, we spoke about how this online and offline monitoring works, how we can collect evidences. So, uh, we can use this to protect and preserve network-based evidences, hashes, copying evidences, uh, creating, you know, we can use different, different methods. Again, um, I'm gonna make all this available f to you, but I want to actually go and show some cool stuff. For that, uh, I want you to understand the network forensic procedure. First of all, we have to be able to identify what's going on. We have to be uh, understand how and what type of incident is happening. If possible, you have to preserve or freeze the activities. How can we do that? By preserving the logs, preserving the policies, look in the databases, and here is a beautiful slide deck for you, which explains how you can accurate the data. You can image the server storage or the data storage. Live forensics, Hassan showed you how we can, um, and I had a demo as well, how you can get the memory out, how you can get the processes. To open ports, you can use uh, for Marcus Novich TCPV or F port. Uh, you can use IP trace, 
packet analysis. To acquire logs, you can check the router, firewall logs, Windows networking logs. To analyze, you should be able to look in the storage devices. And now in our next session, we're going to talk about Trojan, Scaloggers, hacking tools, logs, okay? So this can be done. But it's important that whatever we do, we should be able to validate results with more than one system. We should be able to be aware of the malicious traffic. We should be able to document. I don't know how many times I re uh, repeated this today, but this is really, really, really important. Documenting, 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 following a methodology that a third party can verify. You can't just say, hey, this is my methodology. My name is Erdal Eskaya. I am the MVP. I am a doctor in information security. I'm a lecturer at Charles Wood University, and this is my methodology. No, unless I get the published research, it's been accepted, it's a different story. Yeah. OK? Exactly. Uh, life analysis, we talked about it. We, allows us to collect the data from validated locations such as RAM and cache. It often will provide extremely useful data, Hussein proved that. Uh, you might have to install some data, uh, sorry, some software to capture the data. But the thing here is the goal. It will get us information who's doing what and what's happening now. It will help us to snapshot the state of the computer and diagnose it. It's a methodology which we look into it. And again, we covered all of these. I'm just doing a quick recap. You can quickly follow it yourself. You can have, a, you can have many different stuff via live validated data. Um, of course, it's your job to be able to send what is more validate and what is less. And this is a methodology for how you can collect this information to make it useful and presentable. You have to, you have to, you have to actually match the non-volatile part with the volatile part and make sure that you get a, a complete story from that. Exactly. And you have to be able to tell and show what have you used and how you used. Um, Okay, now I want to quickly show you a few, uh, instead of demo here, uh, this is a normal ICMP traffic. All what I've done is uh, use TCP dump. Uh, here is my ping. I'm in you know, a pinging, getting echo reply. Here, uh, I got my host unreachable. Here is my three way handshake as we demonstrated with Raymond. I'm trying to, you know, connect. As you can see, all this can be dumped. Fragmentation, that's uh, what I do and how I do. What is the ID, what is the size, what is the offset, what is the more flex? Sorry, uh, for some reason, <laughs> this went a bit out of order. But uh, I think you, <laughs> you know. Here's the Nmap. Nmap is one of the best tools that you can use, which is free. Uh, you're going to start Nmap, you can just download it from insecure.org. It's totally free. It will show you, I mean, that's uh, interesting ports, not shown, what port is open, what MAC address. Again, um, you can see all the ports being used, if it's been open, uh, the service, which we can use also from um, TCP view yeah. or net state commands. But N Nmap, I think, is also sort of a port scanner, isn't it? Uh, Not really. Uh, yes, yes, we can use it as well, but there are some other port scanners that we use. Uh, you can definitely use that. Uh, Wireshark, it's one of the best tools, again, that you can use. You can uh, see the packet listing, the detailed data various protocols, the rare data, and uh, this is the best way to get the information, you can see who's doing what and how. You can uh, follow a TCP stream and you can see password request, for, you know, you can, uh, you can just look into the details uh, and uh, I don't know if you can see, yes, uh, you can just 
get it in different different uh, awesome. formats. You can uh, follow the data. For that, uh, I'm gonna come to my next demo. Quickly, I'm gonna fire up uh, uh, Metasploit. What I'm not Metasploit. Um, Bioshock. What I'm going to do here is okay. The scenario is I got a live system. In that live system, I can't install anything to the hard drive. But hey, I'm gonna use my uh, USB stick, which I got from Microsoft in my last event. I got the, my portable, I plug it in. I started, let's, let's go to demo machine. Here's my demo, I'm starting it. And this is the screenshots which I showed you. You can see how the packet's been there. You can see the protocols. Let me scroll down. You can start capturing data. Once you capture it, now you can stop the video. <laughs> you will cut off this part, uh, last few seconds, please. <laughs> did it play all the way through, or did it? Uh, yeah, it did. Okay. It's just a bit short. All right, hold on, I'm just writing up time here. Where is <laughs> um, but I think we've done good. I was rushing a bit, but I think we saw there. I haven't seen the slides like at all, huh? Yeah, I don't know. There, there were so many slides in there that I didn't recognize, I was like, yeah, I haven't been able to cut you back too much because it's just slide, 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 slide. I'm like, oh, okay. All right, here we go. Uh, picking back up on URL. And three, two. So, I know I covered lots of slides here, okay? Um, but the idea was, I mean, Wireshark, I can talk all day about it, okay? Uh, but this is not a Wireshark training. First of all, be, the aim of this session was to show what you can do and how you can do. And the first step is to understand how the networking works. Yes, and, you... and I, think, I think the most important message here is that network forensics is a completely different sport from all the other Windows security forensics that we've been doing during this course. Uh, yeah, and this was the idea of uh, demonstrating, I mean, uh, to showcase the stuff for you. If you understand this, the next step will be doing lots of practice. So, this brings us to the summary. Um, in this module, my aim was, together with Raymond, our aim was to show you what network forensics is and how it's been differentiated with computer forensics, digital forensics, I mean digital forensics is part of it. Uh, the importance of packet inspection, the importance of uh, packet analysis. I mentioned three tools. Please go ahead and play with them. I mean, if I start to demo all of these, it's gonna take us hours and hours and hours because they are all huge and beautiful tools. Please take a time, learn these tools. Uh, as you noticed, we didn't fire up any uh, PowerShell or re we didn't do much, but you can do this as well. P PowerShell has some uh, beautiful networking statistics as well. But before we go there, I want you to understand how this works. And I hope this module gave you a clear understanding on this. I hope you enjoyed it. Raymond. Thank you very much, Erdl. Thank you very much for watching. And next session is all about malware hunting. Please make sure you watch it. Thank you very much. Thank you.